Put a smile on your face when you're moving from place to place. place. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome back to the Morning Show and Tobago Updates Television, and thank you for staying with us. We begin conversations this morning by speaking with Mr. Michael Frank of Frankie Stores, a reef tour boat owner here on the island of Tobago. And of course, we're going to be speaking about the impact of crime on the tourism industry um, here on the island. Good morning, uh, Mr. Frankie, and welcome. Good morning, good morning. Good morning, Trinidad and Tobago and the wider community. Right. Yeah. Um, and so, well, we know we're in a situation now. Um, if I can recall, the last time we had conversations here, we were talking about, this was post-COVID, and we were talking about how the industry was picking up. Mm -hmm. And um, you went on to say that we could destroy the previous records because it was doing so well. And now here we are, another situation is arising, and we're experiencing a lot of criminal activity on the island of Tobago, some resulting in the deaths of persons, murder tolls um, rising, gun violence, and all types of violence happening on the island of Tobago, sadly, which um, we, we have having reports reports that the TTPS and the other agencies are trying to put strategies in place to curb this measure of uh, violence. In the interim, though, while it is happening, we want to talk about how it is impacting the industry um, from where you sit as an operator, as um, um, someone who interacts with our tourists, um, both domestic and international tourists. How has it been um, in your neck of the woods? Well, put it this way. Crime is very bad for the country. Is affecting the country negative in any way and every way you could think about it. However, because a crime is basically no happen, people have already had their bookings in place already. So in most cases, it's difficult for them to cancel or just jump off. So it's busy. The island is extremely busy right now. But from the international market, it is not doing very well mm. at all. I mean, I just came back from Germany about a month ago, a couple months ago, and all... Everything you could see in the papers is negative reviews about Tobago. And that has a major downstream effect on the country. And I actually went to Holland as well, and it was the same. Because being a tourism operator, I would always check on, you know, to see how we're doing on the international market. And on all sides, it's extremely negative. And that was about a month and a half ago. So it's even getting worse now because the crime statistic has risen. And of course, with that, it's going to put more negative publicity out there. And locally, I can see the trend. I'm talking to people every day, and they also, even from locally from Trinidad and Tobago, is, is a, they have a problem with the crime. And they all have the negative impact that if it continues, they will not come here. Um, anything that is wrong affect tourism. Crime is the worst one of them. Um, so the trajectory is not very good for the long term. So hopefully we can put a handle on this as soon as possible. That's right. And, you know, as you mentioned earlier, you said that persons have already made their bookings, they've paid for their tickets, and so they're either already here or heading here on the island. But in terms of them being on the island, coming to Tobago, what is it like in terms of um, participating in tourist activities, for instance, tours and, and other activities um, on the island, whether it's reef tours, island tours? What have you been hearing or what has been the experience in terms of what is happening in the immediate space? Well, it's busy, as I say. It's very busy. Mm -hmm. So if they already had the ticket booked, they most likely had the tours booked already. So they will just go ahead with it because they're already here. And Tobago is very beautiful. So regardless of the crime, people are happy just to be in the sun and the sea and to be out there in the forest and all this stuff. But have so, they had any type of apprehension, although they have already booked their tours and they said, OK, we've already booked and paid for it, so we might as well go. Um, have you had any or heard any feedback in terms of we're here, but we kind of... You, you can't really enjoy yourself as much as you want to because you're thinking maybe something might happen. Have you had that kind of experience or encounter? Not, not really, not really. Um, but I, I can hear from the background that people is afraid, people is skeptical, but they're still going about their business. Um, in most cases, what you're hearing more is that um, the crime is more confined to a certain element. And it's not really touching the white stream people. You know, and so most of the truth, although they're skeptical, they're still... Oh, yeah, they're still having a good time. And in terms of being an operator and an owner, um, what type of um, measures are, have you or thought of or, or tried to put in place to ensure the safety, one, of your patrons and also the confidence in the fact that, listen, we we, we okay, we have a measure on this and we can take care of you when you are in our, our company? Well, we, we have upgraded a lot. I mean, a lot, about 150%. 
upgraded on the form of lots more cameras, lots, lots more security on every single sector. Um, because we are dealing with tourism and one bad mistake will have a major effect for any tour operator. So we, on our side, we have upgraded a lot. I mean, we have spent a lot of cash just on upgrade, on, especially on cameras and other form of securities. And so yeah, that's what we are doing to improve it. All right, and I'm happy to know that, as you mentioned, that the period is busy, that people are still coming, and you know, because they've already booked, and you mentioned that the trajectory might be very negative if we continue, if the crime situation continues to escalate, or even um, continues as it is right now. And so how, we want to talk about now your, your point of view in terms of the agencies who are responsible for ensuring that we live in a safe space. Um, I know that there have been multiple town hall meetings. I know that there are community involvement. I know that they are working with external agencies to ensure that we can curb crime on the island of Tobago. Have you been a part of any of these conversations? Has there been any consultation with the business community, with the tourism community in terms of um, the approaches that can be taken? Well, yes, I have been in a lot of different meetings that consist of how we can help. Um, crime is not just a government thing or a police thing. It's an everybody thing. Everybody has to play their part in order for us to control the crime situation. I mean, it's hard work on the police alone to do it. And we know, as I think, most time the police can only act after the fact. Um, what we need to do is to stem the, the flow of guns and manager into the country. And there are many ways we can do that, and I'm surprised that we have not jumped into the fact of using drones to patrol the ocean to make sure that people don't travel in and out of the country legally and bring in things and into the country legally. Um, we have to make that step. We have to be able to protect our borders. If we don't, it's just going to get worse and worse. Um, so being able to just stem the crime here on the island is one, but stopping more from coming in is another situation. We have to find a way to stop it. And that's right, because as we always say on this program, whenever we talk about especially gun-related crimes, we don't manufacture guns here. Yeah. So they're coming in through our borders. So border strengthening is very, very important, as it were. Uh, you know, and you know, where you stand there, your other colleagues who also, you know, have the same trade as you, um, how has it been for them? What have they been saying about, you know, their experiences and, and their confidence in the fact that the industry is doing okay now, um, but how, how do we, we have to put a handle on the crime situation, we have to put a handle on it to ensure that we can continue and sustain, because most of them, that is their primary source of income, right? Uh, how do, what is the feeling like on the ground in terms of your colleagues? Well, they are skeptical about what's going to happen in the future. We all are skeptical because we already know that crime is going to push the tourism down. And because of that, everybody is now putting things in place to see what can be happening in the next month or next two months. Um, we are at a situation right now that although things is good, we know that at the trajectory, it's going to get really bad. Mm -hmm. We have already have a very low tourism in Trinidad and Tobago compared to all the other Caribbean islands. Um, and all we're doing is heading further down. Um, for the last couple of years, tourism has dropped, I would think, 70% or something like that. Um, the people that sustain tourism in Tobago mainly now is the local people. Mm. People from Tobago here, people from Trinidad, they are the main sustainer of tourism. And if we get them scared, we're in real major problems. So we have to do something to stop it. Um, and all the colleagues are on the same page with this. The, the thing has to be major enforcement from all sectors, not just land-based, but sea-based, air-based. Every single sector can stem this. The people have to put their part in as well. Everybody has to come together to see if we could fix this problem. And you know, you mentioned that um, tourism, in your opinion, and your experience rather, um, has been on the decline for the past couple of years, right? Mm -hmm. What would you say or what would you recommend as something that can be done to um, bring some measure of improvement? Um, because, of course, you've been in this business for a very long time, so you've seen trends, mm -hmm. you've seen how, how the traffic moves, you've seen what people respond to. What are some of the things or one main thing that you think can be either implemented or re-implemented to bring that measure of um, increase in the influx of persons here on the island of Tobago to participate in tourism activities? Well, the first major thing we have to do is mass advertising. We have to do mass advertising in countries that we don't normally advertise to. Um, our marketing is mainly geared towards the US and towards Europe. We have to spread it across the board. We have to look at new markets and we have to increase our airlift into the country. As we stand, Tobago has literally no airlift, <laughs> two flights a week. This is, that is a drip in the bucket 
you know, if you compare to any other Caribbean island, the minimum flight, say for instance, Grenada have, in a day, you're talking about 20. Minimum. If you talk about Barbados and Jamaica and them, you're talking about 40, 50 international flights a day. We lock it, we have two a week. No, this is, this is not tourism, especially from the international market. This is just, we're literally kicking ourselves in the bum. We're not doing anything to improve the tourism. We need to advertise mass around the world. We need to increase our airlift so that there could be a, a nice revenue driven from the international market. The local people live right there and they are struggling to get here. Airlift has to be improved and even sea lift because we need more people coming into the country. And you know, that is a very interesting um, point of view because the conversation about getting to Tobago has been ongoing for years. It's not a new conversation. It has been going on for a very long time. And I know um, in, in reports from the, the Secretary of Tourism, I know she mentioned that they are in conversations with getting mm. um, more airlifts, more airlines in, on the island of Tobago in terms of international um, airlines coming in here. Um, and but the primary thing really um, is to fix the domestic, yeah. the domestic um, bridge yeah. between Trinidad and Tobago as well. You know, there are certain things that have to be done in order to ensure that, you know, that the influx of people on the island, you mentioned that right now, as it were, um, domestic tourism is what is really carrying us. You know, and of course, we have to ensure we put those things in place as well. Uh, Mr. Frankie, in closing, what are some, what is the main thing you want our viewers to take away from, from here this morning? Remember, we have internet national viewers who are looking at us, who would want to come on vacation in Tobago, who would want to be tourists and participate in the beauty of the island, to experience the island of Tobago. Um, if you were to sell this island, to mark this island in 30 seconds, to tell them, listen, yes, let's not talk about the crime part, right? But why is it important for them to still come and, and enjoy what is happening here on the island of Tobago? Well, we have one of the best Caribbean islands. I've been to every single Caribbean island, and, and Tobago is a gem. Um, it has extremely natural beauty. It has really beautiful people. This country has, is amazing in every way and form. We have some of the best wonders of the world. An island pool, for instance, is, you can't compare it anywhere in the world you can go. I mean, we have, what we have here is hard to actually put into one small cap. Sea, sun, forest, we have it all. Yes, and so people should come to Tobago because there's a lot to offer in every way and form. Good food, good culture, good in every way and form. All right, thank you so much, ladies and gentlemen. We've been speaking with Mr. Michael Frank of Frankie's Tours, speaking about the impact of crime on the tourism industry and just general um, tourism industry conversations this morning as it were. Thank you so much for joining us. And ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for staying with us even up until now. We have to go for a short break before we continue conversations in studio this morning. And as we go for that break, we ask you to help us. Share the life, share the life, share the life. We'll be right back. <laughs>